set very quickly, then I have to get back to my U-boat. Um, it's, uh... Oh, I can take my coat off now, I just needed it for that joke. It's not even a great joke, it costs me 70 euro. But, uh, fuck it, we go, we go on. The, I'm trying try to angle the tank, just let me angle this properly. Uh, I am filming this, by the way, just in case there's anybody doesn't want to be a I might put it up on YouTube if it's funny. There's a first time for everything. If, uh, if anyone doesn't want to be identified on film for whatever reason, maybe you're supposed to be in work. <laughs> or you're, 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 you're here with a, an old girlfriend, you don't want the wife to see. If, uh, if anyone doesn't want to be identified on film, just let me know now and you can get one of these off me. If you just need a hit. <laughs> Fuck for that, I've only got two. <laughs> <laughs> they're, actually, they're actually cut off from a, a burka factory. Jesus, <laughs> <laughs> that's the best response I've ever gotten for that joke. I don't know why that is. I did that, I did that joke in a... Uh, in, uh... Sorry, I don't, can't afford my own cameraman yet, so... <laughs> I did that burka joke in England a couple of weeks ago and the entire room went Ooh. as if clothing somewhere got offended. <laughs> That's what I love about Northern Ireland, you don't give a fuck about any other religions. <laughs> when Islam finally starts to take over the planet, I'm moving up here. I'm not, I'm not Even the Scientologists have to work in teams of three. <laughs> With a table, fucking <laughs> upturn it and hide it behind if it gets too rough. <laughs> Actually, if you prefer instead, you can have the more traditional blurred face. <laughs> <It's>, uh, <laughs> no. Don't worry, it's not 40 minutes of this shit. I have jokes. <laughs> they were me two best ones. <laughs> No, I kind of pulled out all the stops of this gig. Well, I asked them specifically if they could just put up one shelf specifically for my drink. <laughs> he wasn't sure how much I drank, so... <laughs> <laughs> That's not your drink, is it? <laughs> doing on my fucking shelf. <laughs> I'm going to take a second. In about 10 minutes, he realised, fuck, I left me drink up there. I can't walk up behind the comedian when he's on and turn into a fucking pantomime. <laughs> so I'm going to be pulling my sleeves up a lot because they keep sliding down. It's, I don't know. Anyway, um, I don't even know what to fucking talk about. I, I'm, I'm, uh, I, you can probably tell from, from my accent, I am only interested in people for what I can get out of them. Um, <laughs> The, that joke works better in Galway than all places for some reason. That's usually where Dublin people go to be disappointed that there isn't drugs freely available. <laughs> um, it's it's uh, no, I, I'm from I'm from Dublin. I assume everybody here is from Oma. I had to ask how to pronounce that. Is it Oma or Oma? And in my head, I just have Okla Oma. <laughs> I've been trying really hard not to say that. <laughs> I just did. I'm not saying these are a gay musical or anything. I'm sure it's much more the opposite. So, uh, more of a straight western. I don't know. It's, it's uh, but it doesn't matter where we're from, which side of the border, all that shit. We're all 
We're all united in our fear of gangs of 12 year olds in tracksuits. <laughs> <laughs> it just it just helps if you're from somewhere rough. Um have you I'm I'm north side Dublin. You've all heard of Ballymon in Dublin. Yeah. Yeah. I live next to it. Uh, in Santry, it's a little bit posher. You know, when, I, when I'm playing Belfast, I'm from Ballymun. It's weird how it differs. Um, but I'm used to the proper, you know, the tracks. So what's, what's it you call the track? Is it Spides here? Chabs. Chabs. Spides. Spades. 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 Spides. Spides. But you know, when you're used, when you're from a rough area or near a rough area, you're kind of, and you're used to the proper, like, Stabby ones. <laughs> when you see a gang of them in a posh part of town, you can't help but laugh at the fuckers. Because they do not have threatening down to the same art. I did a gig last week in uh, Wicklow. It's kind of a very posh outside Dublin. It's, they don't even have kids there. That's how posh it is. They don't want anything that's going to make them have to get rid of that two seater sports car. You know what I mean? Fuck that shit. But I got off the train in, in this place in Wicklow and there was a gang of tracksuited youths in white orange tracksuits. <laughs> and they were carrying bags of cans looking for somewhere to drink like proper, you know, spy drinking. Here's the difference between posh and poor areas. One of them was also carrying a bag of ice. <laughs> self-respecting knacker drinker is gonna spend the money on a bag of ice when you can still get two more cans of tenants out of the same fucking money. I usually go with Dutch Gold. I don't know if you have Dutch Gold up here, do you? Yeah. Yeah? Oh, the real drinkers down the back. Oh yeah, I fucking eight cans of those babies waiting for me when I get home tonight. Can't have too much proper beer. It's uh, myself and Dutch Gold go way back. I'll, I'll get into that in a minute. But uh, yeah, I just I, I posh people knacker drinking in tracksuits. It doesn't work. It's it's more of a. Oh, I don't mind roughing it for an evening, but I'm not drinking like a terrible animal. <laughs> 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 Steer me back with the lemon. <laughs> Dermot never made it back. Got beaten up by a gang from Baggy Morning. Shit was lemon up his hole. Sliced. <laughs> lemon, I mean, not his hole. So, so uh, yeah, it's, uh, no, it, it's, it's fucking, it's, Baggy Morning is kind of, I'll tell, I'll tell you how kind of track simply it is. In Baggy Morning, this is long hair. <laughs> you know what I mean? You're gonna stand it. And I've had longer hair than this. I had to get a cut for well I was going through that people shout stuff out to you, you know, here this that a haircut. You know, you just you get pissed off and you just answer back something smart like ah your mother fillets tramps or something. <laughs> that goes over the heads of most eight year olds. <laughs> <laughs> This eight-year-old came up to me in Bally Moon when, when I had the hair a bit longer and he kind of went, here, I'm start getting a haircut. And I just shouted back, get a da. <laughs> <laughs> he went off crying. <laughs> I don't know if he hit a sore point or not, but... <laughs> Seriously, fuck him. The little bastard would probably try and stab me in about six years. <laughs> Might as well get a preemptive dig in while I'm still young enough to run away from the fucker. <laughs> 42 now, I can't be fucking running. I had to get my hair cut just so he doesn't send his mass brothers after me. Um, so, uh, the, uh, the, yeah, uh, mm, Dublin. 42 is a weird, just give me a, a, a show of hands, anyone over the 40 mark? Ladies, you don't have to answer because I know he's yeah, a funny yeah. that. Yeah. A couple of men. Because I kind of, I'm 42 now, but. I mean, once you pass 40, you're, you're fucked anyway, because you realise you're fucking halfway there, you know, and it's, it's, it's only another, the last 40 years just pissed by, presumably I'll be 80 before I know it, do I just start acting 80 now? Do I pick a style of dress now to stick to for the rest of my life? Do I 
I, the only 80 year old I ever knew was my granny, and she used to do this thing a lot of that age group used to do. They just sing to themselves. I don't know if they're trying to block out voices or if it was an attempt by old people to keep music alive before they invented vinyl. But like, she'd do this thing where she'd be walking around her kitchen making banana sandwiches with a fork or something, I don't know. And, uh, now it does actually work as much as it is. <laughs> She'll be walking around her kitchen singing, you know, I'll take the high road, you take the low, la 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 You let her away because she's old. But is that what we're going to be like when we're that age? <laughs> Only with contemporary music. <laughs> Are we going to be there in 2065 walking around our grandkids' kitchens one day singing, I kissed a girl. <laughs> it lacks a certain dignity. I tell you, know I'm over forty. That was the most modern song I could think of. I don't know any Lady Gaga. In fact, I just nearly called her Radio Gaga. <laughs> we will have to change all the old sayings as well, so that one day you'll have. We change the sayings for our generation, so one day you'll have sayings like uh, A watched torrent never downloads. <laughs> Unique personal favourites, I don't know. It's, uh, yeah. I mean, even, even, even your attitude to sex once you pop. When, when you're in your 20s, lads, and you get, remember your 20s? <laughs> and you get offered sex, you basically just come in your jeans <laughs> straight away. And you're young enough where, boy, by the time you get your jeans off, your balls will have refilled again. <laughs> <laughs> but when, you're, when you hit 40 and you're offered sex, the first thought that goes into your head is usually, means having another shower. <laughs> Ask me in a couple of days and we'll need a shower. <laughs> can't fucking, you can't fucking drink the way you used to. Um, I certainly can't. Uh, is there any, is there any, give us a shout out the alcoholics in the room. <laughs> Just a few. Jesus, uh, your denial is a lot stronger than it is. <laughs> order. Oh yeah! They don't know that they're really alcoholic. I'm not now. This here's the thing. I don't drink anymore, but I don't get preachy about it because I do like to smoke a lot of stuff. But, um, <laughs> but like giving up, and I, I, to be honest, I just I, when I when I drank, I was a cunt. That's the only reason I stopped. Now I'm still a cunt, but my aim is better. You know what I mean? <laughs> but. Like, it, it's, it's weird giving up drink in Ireland, because you're, you're kind of met with the same suspicion as in the film Highlander, when his village find out he's immortal. You know that level of suspicion and mistrust? I kind of, oh, hang on, Bono's not drinking anymore. We, 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 we kill him. No, we, we banish him. What? What were you going to say? No, it's gone. Uh, uh, no, it's just, do you know how hard it is to find out you're alcoholic in this fucking country? <laughs> the standard is not that high. You've got to fuck up really bad for another Irish person to, to come up to you and go, listen, I think you could have a problem. <laughs> kind of embarrassing the rest of us with your drinking. <laughs> you need to cut it out of your life. Come on down to the pub and discuss it. <laughs> Like, and this is the problem, this is the problem, I, I hope none of you ever has to get a help with a drink problem because all the self-help groups and the self-help literature, they're written by Americans, for Americans. There's a big fucking difference between what constitutes a drink problem here and in America. If you have six or seven points in one session, anywhere in America, somebody will pull you up about it, they'll come up to you and go, that's not a normal amount to drink. I, I think you could have a problem, buddy. Only in an American accent. <laughs> Don't do accents. You know, six or seven points here is just, I'm on my way home from work. <laughs> <laughs> or in Dublin, it's, I'm on my way into work. <laughs> 
Close, huh? Because I was not back in the first five minutes. If you want to come to the bar, I won't pick on you. I don't think you don't trust me. And you are right not to. Um, the, uh, but, like, I got, because I got this leaflet to, to test me for alcoholism. This American leaflet, right? And it was, there was 20 yes or no questions, and I was told if I answered yes to three of them, I was fucked. <laughs> now, the first... Well, I answered yes to 19 of them. I, I think the only one I said no to was the one involving murder, and even then I can't be 100% safe. There was a lot of blackouts. But the first two questions is shit everybody here does. Question one was, have you ever drank on your own? Who <laughs> fucking hasn't? <laughs> You might have a drink on your own while you're getting ready to meet your friends on a Saturday night or, or a, a pint before a job interview. <laughs> Doesn't mean there's a problem developing. Question, this is the weird question. I don't know how question two got onto a leaflet in this fucking country. Question two was, have you ever missed work because of drink? <laughs> in this country. Industry in Ireland grinds to a halt every Monday morning and most Friday mornings and the odd Wednesday just to break the week up a bit. That doesn't mean there's a boo boo me drink is affecting me work. We only work to pay for the drink in the country. Trust me, if you all quit drinking tomorrow, you would leave your job by Monday. And pursue your dream to be a comedian. <laughs> really, you don't know what it's like. My fucking, I'll tell you about it in a minute. But I, I just, I, I, I did, I, I'm not from fucking drama school or any of that shit. I, I've never did, I was going to say I never did comedy in college. I never did college. <laughs> I worked for 15 years in the printing trade. For anyone who doesn't know, that's too young, who doesn't remember printing, <laughs> it was back when the internet was on paper. <laughs> that's where I learned to drink. <laughs> that's where that would fucking get your fucking alcoholism kicked into gear. And then I, gave, I, I drank my way out of that. And this was the only employment left to me for some bizarre reason. You just... Sort of, most comedians are cunts, I've got to be honest with you. No, not the, not the, the Northern Irish ones. Now, <laughs> no, seriously. Northern Ireland and Scotland, right? They are the soundest comedians, but fucking Douglas bastards. <laughs> I'll offload in a bit. I just want to get some more jokes out of the way first. Uh, the, um... Appreciate the fuckers. <laughs> what? what the fuckers? Appreciate the why the hundred of you? Appreciate? Oh, free state. Sorry. Shit, are we getting into politics now? Because I know nothing. <laughs> I am way out of my depth. I didn't even know what was going on inside my own bedroom until fucking five years ago. I don't want to start getting into comments on Northern Ireland's issues. I mean, they're not as big as most women's issues. <laughs> Years, but they're still big issues. <laughs> I just thought of a joke. I have one joke on Northern Ireland, and I just realised the punchline is actually quite current in the news. I don't know why. Like, the joke I used to have was I just think it's a little bit unfair of the British to hold on to such a sizable clump of the island of Ireland, and yet not once has there ever been an Irish letter answered on. Jim will fix it. <laughs> that was the joke I used to do. And then I go, hang on. Maybe Irish kids are the only ones that have been left unscared. <laughs> By... <laughs> I, don't, I don't even want to go down that road. I haven't fucking written a thing, and to be honest with you, I don't trust myself. Not only, not only off the drink, I gave up fucking cigarettes 13 days ago. 
That's fucking fun. <laughs> then I ran out of weeds three days ago. <laughs> I've never been this aware in my life. <laughs> the, only, the only voice left to me is sex, and that's not as freaky as available as I think it might be for somebody that works in entertainment, because once a woman starts talking to me, I just stare at my shoes for the rest of the conversation. Be forgiven for thinking I'm slightly autistic when you meet me after the show. I'm not being real, I'm just chronically shy. I only do this shit just to get my... <laughs> just. I don't like interacting with humans. I like to squeeze it into about half an hour a day. <laughs> the rest of the time I don't have to do with you fuckers at all. <laughs> Fuck on this drink. <laughs> well, you know if I loosened up and had a drink, I could probably charm the pants off anybody I wanted, but it would, I would be fucking wearing my same underpants three weeks later and nothing else, sitting on the street, drinking out of an empty bag. No bottling, it's just a bag. It's, it never ends well when I drink, to put it that way. They need proper questions on leaflets for Irish people. Wait, do you have... Question one on an Irish leaflet should be something like, Question one! Have you ever pissed into the wardrobe of someone you vaguely know at two in the morning? Then you can go, yeah, maybe me drinking's becoming socially awkward. <laughs> Pissing into a wardrobe isn't really that bad. You try getting away with shitting into a cup. They won't talk to you, yeah. no matter how long sober you are. That's like... There was no baby in it, I just want to add that. It was just an empty well, there was clothes and shit. But... Wait! Just a fucking insane. Oh, the insanity. I gave up, I gave up booze nine, nine, years, nine and a half years ago. And I started doing this shit nine years ago because I had to get the demons out somehow. And I managed to stay off for nine years now. In the last year, I've had a few fucking... You know where you got nine years off. I must be better now. <laughs> I'm sure I cured myself of my alcoholism. That's how it works, isn't it? You just uh, and it's funny what puts you back on the drink because I've been through some shit over the last nine years. I've broken up with a fiance. I've I've had my head kicked in and stapled back together in the hospital. I've never drank on any of those things. I've had a few fucking little wobbly moments in life. But two months ago, I was walking through town. And I saw Yoda advertising Vodafone. <laughs> I said, fuck this shit, it's all fucking fucking world is fucked. <laughs> what am I staying sober for now? What new creative thing is ever gonna amaze me when Yoda has fucking pissed on my childhood with a bit of green felt pop? <laughs> Like, I remember the first time I lived on my own, I was about 26 when I got a flat on my own, and of course there's nobody to watch your drinking, so it's just fucking party, you know? And I got to the stage where I was actually sick of not remembering coming home from the pub each night. I, I wouldn't remember, I, I'd be afraid in case I started a fight with somebody or got into an argument, which is fucking ridiculous because I've subsequently discovered I'm a fucking coward. Right? <laughs> Trapped in the body of a bigger coward. <laughs> I, it, it's just, but I, I, it's frightened the shit out of me. So I got into the habit of leaving notes for myself when I got in to find the next morning. And I, like, I get up in the morning and it'd be like a note written by me in very sloppy handwriting, just saying, "Dear Robbie, just letting you know, nothing bad happened tonight." <laughs> Signed, Robbie. <laughs> Now, the fucker left the hall door wide open. <laughs> you can't go by drunk Robbie's fucking advice or information about the situation. He's fucking gone in the head. <laughs> binge drinking is my favourite, because... Because you go on, on a binge for about five or six days, but you don't eat. You might get one snack box into your day two, but that's another thing. Snack boxes have not tasted as good since they stopped drinking. Um, so enjoy it where you can. 
But you, you're day five, you're on a binge, and you realise, fuck, I'm going to need a shit. And you, you haven't eaten in five days, you know it's going to be messy. It's, it's 1.20 in the morning, you're in town, where the fuck do you go? You just aim for lights. You end up in some nightclub you've never been in before, you don't know where the toilets are, there's fucking queues coming out of them, and oh, fuck man, you eventually find somewhere and you sit down and just pull down the jocks and just and you realise fuck I should have checked for toilet paper before <laughs> so, uh, you look around you you can't see any start rifling through the pockets of the coats hanging up beside you <laughs> there was a cloak room <laughs> I don't miss those days. Yeah. But uh, I, I, I did try the, the, the marijuana plan for a while. I don't know what, what's the attitude to, to drugs like that up here. Because I remember doing, I did that joke in, in, in Derry. I did a gig in Derry and I asked the audience, who here has ever smoked marijuana? And it was just this room of silence. And one voice down the back just went, this is dirt. <laughs> <laughs> Who here has ever smoked marijuana? <laughs> cool. Excellent. I have none, so if anybody wants to help me out after the show, I'd actually prefer that to the sex. I'm just letting you know now. It's, uh... <laughs> I tried the marijuana plan. As I say, I'm still struggling with it, but... Joe, I'll just explain for anyone that's never been stoned. I'll explain what being stoned feels like, just so we're all on an even feel. Being stoned is like, you know when you walk into the kitchen and you've forgotten what you went in for? <laughs> it's, it's like that all the time, okay? <laughs> But, with just a hint of panic. <laughs> Do you remember the, the Olympic swimmer Michael Phelps yeah. got done for smoking weed and all the sponsors pulled out on him? Do you know who his first sponsor was to go? Kellogg's. <laughs> I know! She's way ahead of you. <laughs> Somebody likes her late night cereal. Like somebody from Kellogg's actually had the nerve to go, we don't want weed smoking associated with our quality products like cocoa cups and frosted ricicles. That's not our target market. Kellogg's, that's your only fucking market. People only buy that sweet flavoured shit at 2 a.m. from a garage, right? When you've gone down for cigarette papers. You see the cereal down the back, oh fucking yeah, that's <laughs> Even then you forget to get milk. <laughs> back home at 2.30 a.m. eating cocoa pops out of a hastily empty potpourri basket. It's the only clean fucking vessel in the house. <laughs> but, I weighed up. I weighed up the pros and cons. I thought a life of constantly being drunk versus a life of constantly being mildly high. Like, what's the worst you could do if you were always pissed? Probably get behind the wheel of a car, get into an accident, some shit like that. The worst thing I've ever done stoned on weed, and this is the bottom line for me, the worst thing I've ever done, I once got so fucked I couldn't stand up and I had to sit through four hours of SpongeBob SquarePants. <laughs> is much funnier when you're stoned. There's jokes your kids don't see. There's fucking... The babysitting hour is just whiz by. <laughs> don't worry, nobody leaves kids with me. It's all right. Yeah. So, yeah. No, I'm not giving the child to mind. I just hold it like it's about to explode. You know? It's kind of... That's what you want to get to work in bomb disposal. Men that are scared of babies. <laughs> they, they won't fucking... Anyway, I don't know where that came from. Uh, 
The um, oh, I don't know. It's so yeah. And you, you see yourself, I mean, fucking, see, drugs get a bad rap, especially when you're from Dublin, because fucking two, a third of us are, are fucking junkies. <laughs> yeah, you've been, you've been to Dublin, probably most of the junkies that are here are from Dublin. <laughs> I know, yeah. But you, I'm sure most of you have been to Dublin at some stage in the last uh, year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. um, it's kind of, uh, out of every three, one is a junkie. And chances are the other two are drunk and a fucking weed smoker, but <laughs> but they, they just it's just fucking constant now. They the junkies are almost half of the normals, and it, it's 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 a uh, and they come up to you all the time. Yeah, can you give me some change? And we don't. There's a recession on. We don't have change to give these fuckers, right? I I I'm not giving a guy money to buy drugs when. I don't have money to buy drugs. <laughs> that shit. You can't say no to them because then they go, you're fucking cunt you. And they try to get into a fight with you and you know, you don't, don't want that. I found the best way to deal with them and if any of you are down in Dublin again, use this, right? Just confuse the fuck out of them. Talk back to them as if you're Tom Waits. I discovered this by accident, right? This junkie came up to me a few weeks ago and kind of... Yeah, can you give me some change? And something inside me snapped, I just went, I can't give you any change. <laughs> <laughs> I have to get mad hair for this. I can't give you any change, but I can give you some difference. <laughs> Served with a slice of lemon and the bitter taste of a faded dream. <laughs> and you're just fucking weird, aren't you? <laughs> it works, but you have to be confident. It doesn't work, I need to fix my hair now. I keep, trying, I keep trying to get a David Tennant thing going, but then it fucking falls down here. I don't know, I don't know. It's kind of halfway between David Tennant and that's me. <laughs> Most of you have a fucking reason I'm talking about it. Sorry, I get very self-indulgent sometimes, but that's what human race gets for talking to me about fucking football. Um, it's one thing, and I, I know I probably cut half my audience out here, I just don't have the head for sports. Both my brothers are into it, both me, me, both me dads. My dad my gay dads are into football. It's unusual for gay men. Uh, it's, uh, I just... And that's what I can never figure out. I spent a brief period working as a barman. That was fucking. That was the fucking poacher becoming the groundskeeper. Um, <laughs> people would just assume they talk to you about football and just assume you know what they're talking about. I think it's a bit of a rude assumption to make. I'm into fucking Doctor Who, but I'm not going. I'm not going to. I'm not going to walk up to complete strangers at bars and go. Oh, fucking hell, to see Dr. Hill. Like, Who's fucking liver is their daughter? No, fucking. See, I was on the edge of me fucking seat. I thought fucking time was gonna collapse. But no, they see. I was. I you know, just look at you like. People, people, and I presume it's the same up here. I don't know. Well, in Dublin, like, people put the tricolour in. The window when Ireland are playing. Is it the same here? No, I doubt. Might have a different connotation if you stick a tricolour. Out of here. We have no idea. But they stick a tricolour to show support for the Irish team. Why? The Irish team are fucking away. They can't see our flags. You're just telling the other Irish people, "Help from Ireland, me too." Look out. <laughs> Do you know what happened if I tried to convert my porch into a police box? I get kids fucking rocks through me windows, that's what I get. <laughs> so we don't. So what the hell was I talking about? Oh yeah, Ju Dublin junkies. Um, and this was scary, this is another thing, and this is something you have to look out for anywhere. A lot of junkies are starting to get really decent looking girlfriends. <laughs> I don't know how. I like it's because I'll see it and, and I don't know what these like well presented women 
They looked like they're their carers at first. Do you know what I mean? You'd see them walking along and you go, oh, he looks a bit rough, she looks all right, they can't be that much trouble, do you know what I mean? I don't know what she's doing with them, maybe she knows that the apocalypse is about to come and she needs a man who can get her shit. But, but this couple, I was standing on Carnell Street, is up on the outside the Woolshed Comedy Club, and this couple came walking by and my guard was completely down and he pulled out a syringe on me. Now, oh, that's scary in itself, but all of a sudden she's real, ha oh, ha, my way, he's brilliant. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's trying to give you your fucking whatever. And when you've got a syringe quite close to you, it's very hard to know what to do. Do you just give them your shit and hope he doesn't fucking prick you with it? Or do you just throw your shit at him and leg it? Do you just leg it and hope he doesn't catch up? I had to think on my feet, and just in the heat of the moment, the only logical way I could think to get out of it was, I punched her in the face and ran at the motherfucker. It's not... It's just the most... It's the first time I've ever gotten an applause for violence against women. I was nobody's heir. I assume Terry was still there, because it's all in darkness. So that, no. <laughs> I've kind of gotten awkward now. I'm not too sure about his mental state. Some pink elephant he's talking to to his left. No, that's 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 they think I'm crazy. I know. Well, how do you think it's going? I've kind of been coasting up to now. I don't know. Can you find. Just ask Ziggy if he can find some of Robbie's jokes because I need to fucking tell these. Yeah, two of them got the Quantum Leap reference. That's the rest of talking about. It goes better than most fucking college gigs I'm doing. College gigs are fucking horrible. You feel like you're in Logan's Run. And you can't even joke about it because no one in the audience knows what Logan's is. <laughs> <laughs> so, fucking young fuckers. Um, so, uh, how was it talking about? Oh, Jimmy, is that? Yeah, anyway, yeah. Punch one. Ha ha. Right. <laughs> yeah. You get me started on women. Have I got long enough? <coughs> oh, fuck. Fucking do. <laughs> you know the way there are men who are convinced that they should have been born as women? I'm sure it exists here. Some men know and they get a sex change later in life or an identity change. Some men will never admit to themselves. They'll bottle it up and they go on to develop drink problems. Um, I'm kind of in the same boat. I'm a man that's convinced I should have been born into money. You know that way? I was born working class and, oh, I say working class, but come on, it's fucking dull class, really. You're the, you're the only class that don't work. Oh fuck, I'm doing a working class gig here, aren't I? <laughs> I should have been born into money. I don't know how to do simple everyday things. I don't know how to drive. I've never, because I, I know deep inside I was supposed to have been born with drivers. That daddy hired. But no, my dad was a fucking working class alcoholic that raised pigeons. Fucking <laughs> the Hell the, I have plans and schemes, I know how to save the planet, but it requires access to billions and billions of pounds. I can't do it on 112 euro a week. <laughs> fucking euro is, is a worthless piece of shit currency. You did well holding on to fucking sterling. <laughs> Jesus Christ, it's, it's... Just so you know, by the way, we've abandoned the euro in the Republic. If you're going down south, just uh, We only keep it in circulation just to fuck with the English, basically. Just, uh, <laughs> just so you know, when you're down there, the Irish monetary system is now based completely on a system of pints. <laughs> you just pay for everything with pints. It's the, uh, it cuts the middleman out. It's, mate, yours knocks you up a nice shelf. You know, you just go, oh, that's Arthur. 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 The what? Arthur. Do Arthur. 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 
Hang on, I need one person to tell me what you're saying. What was that? Translator isn't working. I'm tapping it, I'm tapping it. It's not happening. So what was that thing that sounded like to Arthur? To Arthur. Fucking Arthur. I thought we, we, or, did you have an Arthur guy up here? Yeah. There's not any bollocks. That's just, that's just a, another thing invented by fucking businesses to try and sell shit. It's like Easter and Christmas. 9-11. It's made of shit. Oh, you're back now, are I got that worked because the being born into money bit wasn't really working. It was like, I was trying. It's good to have you back. You felt so fucking alone. He's fucked off. My door just opened up. He disappeared. Fucking tap his fucking cigar everywhere here for us. I don't know how holographic cigars survive. I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. Man. But yeah, we're, we, we just use points to pay for shit. If we make yours not just a set of shells, you go, Jesus, that's brilliant work, mate, thanks a million. Get you a couple of points on tourist night. <laughs> Bus fares are, the, are the, the fun one. A pint, actually, uh, if you want to buy a pint, that costs you a pint. Um, <laughs> if you're ever in Temple Bar, a pint and a quarter. Um, Bus fares are the one we're still trying to work out. Because that's kind of messy. Like, if you want to get a bus, say, two to the airport, please, that'll be a point. Fuck. Uh, can, you, can you break your keg? You have to drag your keg off to a shop and get a packet of chewing gum just to break into it, and then you're leaving the shop carrying 48 pints change. Bring cling film and elastic bands down with you, or you'll get wet pockets. Now I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. Uh, yeah. What I really want to talk about, because I don't drink now, I'm off the cigarettes, which is fucking hell. Uh, I'm on about 40 nicotine lozenges an hour. Um, so naturally the only head wrecking thing still in my life is, is womankind. Um, oh fuck, that didn't get a laugh. I suddenly got very serious there. I thought when I gave up drink, I'd never be in trouble with women again. <laughs> Fucking hell. I'm in more trouble with witches than anything else. It's just I'm more aware of it now. <laughs> Here's the thing, I need to get this off my chest before I go, because I do have to go soon. I, I, I've, actually, I've actually contractually filled my obligations, so... <laughs> I don't have fun with this. If you're, any women are offended by this, I'm not getting paid from here on in. So. <laughs> so, and here's the thing, right, I, I, cause mostly comedy is about women, and it, it's weird because a friend of mine was at a comedy club in Galway recently, and he got talking to a punter about comedy, and my name came up, cause I'm famous. <laughs> <laughs> Even Jimmy Cricket wouldn't talk to me. <laughs> um, well, we were giving seven days apart, so I wouldn't expect him to hang around. Um, but no, he's just a childhood hero. I would love to meet him. I was fucking, I was travelling up here to talk to him. Um, <laughs> Anyway, uh, I just thought the L and the R was the most hilarious joke when I was 10. Mm. Thank you. Uh, here's the thing, a friend of mine was talking to this punter about comedy, my name came up, and this is what was said about me. He said to my friend, have you heard of that Dublin comedian Robbie Bonham? And my friend went, yeah. He says, he's very funny. He's a misogynist, but he's very funny. <laughs> now, two things here, right? One, it's not strictly true. I'm not very funny. <laughs> Two, I'm probably gonna have to explain what the word misogynist is. Mean. <laughs> Some people in the, particularly him. <laughs> uh, you were laughing, you know what a misogynist is? What is this? Just tell the audience. <laughs> Someone who dislikes women. Or dislikes. Has a 
Dislikes is a very mild way of putting yeah. it. <laughs> it's a, yeah, just somebody that hates women. Now, I need to make this very clear before I go on with these jokes. I don't hate women, I'm just on to you. <laughs> Because, uh, and it's, it's a lot of it's, there's a lot of double standards that just aren't fucking holding water anymore. You know, because it is, it's a, it's a, on the one hand, help gotten equality, but at the same time, held on to all the fucking double standards that you shouldn't have anymore. If you have equality now, it's like, like, take women's prerogative. Right? Now, as far as I know, this is how I understand it in Dublin. Tell me if it's the same up here, ladies, right? As far as I know, women's prerogative means a woman has final say on every decision in a relationship. Am I right? Yeah. 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 Not one man disagreed there. <laughs> and women, you can change plans on us at the last minute. Lads, you might think you know what you're doing next Friday. You get there to the score. Surprise, surprise, she's moved the fucking goalposts again <laughs> to include a fucking two day visit to her parents in fucking Milford. <laughs> Men, have you ever tried changing plans on a woman at the last minute? <laughs> fucking don't. <laughs> Because you will never hear the end of it. They start whinging and slapping your chest, and it's all. Yeah, 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 the church was booked, and all our friends came. To the <laughs> you would not clap that joke if you knew how true it was. <laughs> This happened to me three years ago. Uh, now it wasn't, I didn't stand her up at the church. It happened about six weeks before the wedding. And the only reason I, I it's because her money was about to go down on it, basically. I had no money. Her life savings was about to go down, so I better fucking say something. Because I knew I wasn't in love with her, I knew I didn't want to get married, but we'd been together for eight years. Do you know what I mean? And, and I had to sit her down six weeks ago, and I had to sit, and I had to work, I, had, I was working up to this for about, five or six years. <laughs> and I had to say something, because it wasn't fair on my rules. Now, I basically said, listen, I don't love you. I'm not in love with you. I don't want to get married. I want to break up. I'm sorry. And her response was, thank fuck you said something. <laughs> I was waiting until closer to the wedding day to have my shit attack uh, and we essentially shook hands and stayed friends. And it's, now we gave each other a white beard for a couple of months till things healed, you know, removed each other from Facebook. <laughs> and your shit. But we kind of hooked back up, we hang out occasionally. It's a huge fucking problem to any women I've seen since. But, uh, they had other issues. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know the weird? Because the weird thing is, we broke up three years ago, right? I've been doing that. Oh, the church has booked Joe for four years. How did she not see it coming? <laughs> <laughs> and that was the other thing. While I had a girlfriend, all my jokes about women make me seem funny and endearing, but now they just make me look like I have issues. <laughs> um, but it's 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 a weird thing because I was forty when I became single. Now. I waited a year before I had sex with anyone because you need to leave a period of grace just so it looks like you cared. <laughs> but um, after a year, after a year, I'm fuck, I need me whole, I need to make sure bits still work. I just come out of an eight year relationship so I haven't had sex in three or four years. <laughs> it was. And I don't know where you go at 41 to pick up women. I ended up with some fucked up nightclub one night in Dublin, on Georgia Street in Dublin, and a uh, club called Dragon. And um, I did meet a woman. Now, she's a bit taller than me, uh, a little bit broad shouldered, quite large hands, to be perfectly honest. But she was, no, she was lovely. She was dressed nice, everything right down to the scarf. Cut and fold. <laughs> I cut and fold a thing where not, not great tits, I'll admit, but, 
But we ended up talking and we ended up kissing. And it was the best kiss I have ever had. And she asked me back to her place. So I said, fuck, I'm in here. Went back to her house. Long and sure if it was, we were messing around on the couch with each other. And my hand went down the front of her underwear. And I'm not kidding. She had a vagina. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna be honest with you, it's not what I was expecting. <laughs> Think you know what you're getting and then you get a hoodwinked at the last minute. What the fuck is going on out there? The world's gone mad. Okay, Northern Ireland's not so keen on the transsexual. <laughs> I have one more transsexual joke. I may or may not do it at some point before I go. We'll leave it as a surprise. <laughs> Getting back to the double standards, women. Here's the thing as well, being single in your 40s is actually like being Doctor Who. Uh, in that you're now either now hanging around with women way younger than you, or you're running away from fucking monsters. <laughs> Sometimes both at the same time. But here's, here's the thing, and it's something I only noticed when I became single. Like ads on TV, again I think the ads are more or less the same, both sides of the border. Like most ads on TV for women's products, uh, like basically they run along the lines of Ha! My husband's a fuckwit! Come on guys, go and buy tampons. That's most ads for women's products. I saw an ad on a bus shelter for Clairol hair dye and I had a picture of a woman, a nice redhead, and underneath her picture had the words, I like my hair like I like my men. Easily changed. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you. Because <laughs> I mean, like, if you try to reverse it, if you try to sell shit to men and slag women in exactly the same way, have you any idea how nasty that would sound? You're about to. <laughs> um, I come up with the equivalent ad. Like, say I want to sell shit to men. I don't even know what men are into. Stationery? <laughs> no stationery. Say I want to sell stationery to men, slag women. You know the, the A4 refill pads? I use them to write me jokes on, that's how I came up with this. Say I'm selling them to men and slagging women. And this is no worse than the Clairol ad, it would just sound worse because it's just the nature of the sexes, but it'd be something like. I like my A4 refill pads like I like my women. Ruled and punched twice near the spine to keep them in line with the others. Now, if you get that opposite classic, I'm just saying, if you tried to say that publicly on a bus shelter or in an Omar oh comedy club, you get killed by the outside, sucking on your fucking nicotine. <laughs> He's enjoyed that. I'm gonna go with an even worse job. <laughs> by the way, I'm not just in case you think women are getting raw day. Listen, here's something about men, ladies. Every guy here tonight has, at one point in his life, tried to suck his own cock. <laughs> I don't mean sucked his own cock, but tried to. Because we have to know for definite whether we can do it or not. <laughs> If you ask any man, can you suck your own winnie, he'll have a yes or no answer. <laughs> can, you, can you suck yours? No. So he's tried. It didn't work. He knows. It's not even something you have to plan, is it? You could, you could be just sitting in the bath on a Saturday night. No one else in. It's already bottled above the water to meet you halfway. It's like a little, a little Martin Sheen in Apocalypse Now coming up around the sun. It's not much more effort just to go. I wonder. <laughs> Fuck. That close. That's the only reason some men grow beards. Sensation thing. <laughs> and I know how popular a beard is up here. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, where was I? Yeah. yeah. Okay, and here's the here's the Am I right to do ten more? Yeah. Okay. 
You just trying to suck your own cock over there. <laughs> yeah, I think I have it for you, man. <laughs> Out there trying to wheel their beer to go with bigger. <laughs> Here's the thing, and I'm gonna miss this joke. It's a brilliant joke, uh, and it's, it's just the double standard again. Uh, is it all on Facebook and/or Twitter, shit like that? Are you? Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. well, for a minute I thought it was just comedians and no one else. That's how up our hole we are. <laughs> Well, the girl gets her heart broken, doesn't matter whether the guy's a bollocks or whether he's just a normal guy, that, well, whatever, she's hurt and she go on Facebook and announce, all men are bastards, all of them, and all her friends will rally around her and go, you're fucking right, Deirdre, all men are bastards. <laughs> Most men will see this conversation and go, oh, fuck, I'm not touching this with her. They're all bastards. Now, if a man gets his heart broken and goes on Facebook and announces all women are cunts, <laughs> suddenly he has issues. <laughs> now, there is a very good reason for this. It's because all women are cunts. <laughs> I just wanted to say that just to hear how it felt. I don't mean that, obviously, it's just a thing for me. Obviously, I don't mean all women. 90% is, right? But 90% of men are bastards. 90% of every group is a fuckwit. There's only about 10% of us know what we're doing, the other 90 are just getting in our way. You know what I mean? And it, it transcends sex, it transcends race, colour, creed, whatever. They're just 90% of every single group is a fuckwit. Except obviously for this audience. Yeah. <laughs> and you all have the good taste and, and, and grace to come out and enjoy live entertainment. You, you are all fine standing people. <laughs> but your friends and family constantly <laughs> love <laughs> So many sound people in here tonight, the rest of all my just Cunt films. <laughs> I don't usually get away with that joke. Usually I'm doing all the same, but that one, he's a, he's a weird <laughs> I'm just offloading on you now, I'm terribly sorry. <laughs> it's kind of funny when you find yourself standing on a stage in front of 80 or 90 people with a slight erection. <laughs> where where you realise the second you've said that, the second you've said that, they've all momentarily glanced at your cross. Take me these two lads here. I don't have an erection. Just in case you're now thinking I'm a tiny cock. I know my sex life is largely internet based, so it's not the length that counts, it's the bandwidth. <laughs> Yeah, I know, I feel the exact same. Yeah. <laughs> I just have to, I can't do relationships, I just fucking can't. They're, they're a full-time job, and I can't do full-time jobs. <laughs> I have to drink my way out of them. It, it, they're, they're actually, they're, they're exactly like a fucking full-time job. Well, apart from the fact you are drunk for the interview. <laughs> but, um, it'd be great if a relationship was more like a job. Like, wouldn't it be great in a relationship if you could just hand in two weeks' notice? <laughs> no awkward questions. Just, you know, as soon as you find someone better. Better offer. Uh, listen, babe, um, I'm finishing up with you Friday week. Uh, I got a much better offer. She wants me to start on Monday, so I'm just... just um, I'm not rushing into Antla. I've been going for interviews for months. <laughs> The odd backhander. But, uh, it'd be like the last two weeks in any job as well. You try and steal as much shit as you can or whatever. <laughs> shit you'll never use. No, I'll take her hair straighteners. Fuck yeah, that'll do me to make really small toast. <laughs> 
it does actually work if you can get over the taste of burnt hair dye. Um, now here's the one thing. This is the one thing I don't miss about uh, women, or being in a relationship, I should say. See, I'm, I, I'm only picking on women, or appear to be anti-women, because women are who I like having sex with. If I was gay, I'd be an anti-man comedian. Or if I was a woman, I'd be an anti-man comedian. I, I'm more of a lesbian. It's, I don't know. <laughs> but this is the one thing, and again, I don't know if it's unique to kind of Dublin, or if it's the same all over, but nagging is something that kills a lot of relationships. Like, I still get ghost nags from my ex. When I'm having a shower, I can still hear her telling me to wash particular body parts properly this time. <laughs> and I'll be honest with you, that's information I can still use, so I don't mind that so much. But after about year three, most Irish men become able to zone out the nagging involuntarily. And women, you probably find yourself, you have to come up with more inventive nags. <laughs> for them to penetrate our nag force fields. Like weird, unusual nags will get through to us. The last two weeks, I was with my ex. She started nagging me about weird shit. She nagged me about stuff I refused to use. You know, like credit cards and... <laughs> Dental floss and toothpaste and the right hole. <laughs> just gotta zone that shit out. <laughs> Can I just say before I go that just on the off chance I was gonna get lucky with anybody after the show, I'm not into anal sex. That was just a cheap thing. <laughs> I've never had anal sex. I don't want anal sex, okay? I it seems to me a bit disgusting. It seems to me a bit pointless when there's a perfectly nice hole just two centimetres around. I feel like she left her vagina over the far side of the bedroom. You have to walk across a cold floor on your bare feet just to fuck it. <laughs> I'm just saying, I'm not into anal sex. I might try it once. <laughs> if she's really hot and her penis isn't too big. Uh, ladies and gentlemen,